Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna touch on continuing subdivision surface. Um, in it, I didn't cover in the last session. Uh, we have view and we have render. Now, there's a difference between view and render. Right now, render is at 2, and you'll notice if I press F12, and I'm going to change this back to cycles render. If I press F12, you'll notice that my render is actually smoother than what was seen in the view, right? All right, so... The reason behind that is because my view and my render is different. If I want to see exactly what I'm getting in my render view, I just need to turn up the view to two, both of them. So whatever you render is going to be different from what you view. The reason why they keep it less usually is because while you're working, you know, you want to be working fast. You don't need all that memory being wasted. So you can simply just set the view to one and just kind of see what it looks like. So if you had the monkey from the last time, um, we're going to add a few materials to it. So because I've chosen Cycles Renderer as our default renderer, what's going to happen is that our materials is going to be different. So different renderers, generally speaking in 3D, use different materials. So there's materials for different renderers. So if, for example, I was to use a renderer from Cycles, if I was to use a Cycles material and jump back to Blender's internal renderer, it might work in some sense, but it will never ever give you the full capabilities of that particular renderer. So this is what we have here first. I'm just going to create a few materials. First, I'm going to create a color for the monkey, one for the cube and one for the ground. So let's start with the monkey. Uh, Susan is her name. And you'll see the name there. Uh, so uh, here we're creating a new material. One, I'll hit new. Uh, it tells you by default, or we're going to have diffuse, and we're going to have also, um, there's more options like settings. You have something called viewport color. As in, what color is it going to be inside our viewport itself, right? So if I were to change the color here to, let's say, make a monkey brown. Just, you know, play with that and just load that, right, to get a brown color. You're not going to see it change, right? That's because our viewport color is actually white. If, however, we want to change it to be the same thing, I can click on my viewport color here by clicking on the white area. Choose this eyedropper tool and simply select that so that it can be that. So this now, if I were to render it, I'm not going to render it this time. What I'm going to do is you actually have something that says in here, we have different views for objects. Uh, right now, I'm going to just choose rendered viewport shading, which will kind of give me how it would look when I render it in a more dumbed down kind of fashion. So right now it's really brown. And of course, if I move around, it's going to try to re-render everything or re shape everything right so i'll take it out of this view because that consumes ram as well right i can even hear my fans start picking up speed right so this is a diffuse material there are different types of materials just to say uh what we'll do uh just to kind of show you them is i will leave this one like so uh for our cube i'm going to experiment with a different material so diffuse really looks more like paper or something that you can see diffuse is a kind of flat shaded color. Uh, we can also change our colors here. If we change our colors, of course, you know, our viewport is different from our actual color, right? So I'm gonna change the cube as well. I'm gonna hit a new one. So this is material, base material here. Right here we have material 0 0.1. I'll just call this monkey. So we can differentiate between them. Right click on this one as well. And I'm going to create a new material. There's two things. You have material slots over here, and you have materials themselves. Right? Think of a material slot as one object having multiple materials. Example, if you look at your hand, we have the shiny part of our fingernail versus the diffuse part of our just regular skin. Right? So those are, would be two different material slots, the shiny part and the not-so-shiny part. So for this one, I'm creating a new material altogether. So I'm going to hit the plus button here, and I'm going to call this glass, right? I'll hit use nodes, and instead of using the diffuse BSDF, right, I'm going to choose instead glossy. The reason I'm not choosing glass is because, and let me show you what they look like. Here's a preview. I should just call this mirror instead, M-I-R-R-O-R, -R -R, mirror. So what that's going to give me is a mirrored material. 
So I can change the settings of my material by hitting surface. And you can actually just look at the preview and you'll see the differences. Uh, I'm going to increase roughness. It's going to make it reflective, but slightly foggy in terms of the, the, sh the, light, the shading. And you can always lower that. And that'll do for now. And let's say you want to reflect uh, maybe slightly blue. Right? So it's going to look like that. And the floor. I'm just going to create a new material for the floor. I'll just call this floor. F-L-O-O-R. Floor. And I'll just change the color to... Um, let's say I'll just change it to red. A slightly dark red. Alright, I'm leaving that diffuse. But let's say I decide I want to go with, um, I don't know. I'll just leave it at diffuse for now. One more thing I'm going to change is in my world settings, you'll notice when I render things, um, F12, F12. When I render things, things are uh, a little dark. Really dark, aren't they? Right? Um, so I'm going to up some settings. I'm going to, one, I'm going to move my light here in front so just want to make sure my light is in front for one and I'll play with a few settings in terms of the light the size of my lamp is really small and let's say I don't want a, a point lamp which is like light shining from all directions from a single point let's say I want a spot lamp right the spot lamp actually is here and it kind of tells you which direction it's going right it's actually pointing out from the monkey so I'm going to lower the size for one, and I'm going to have it point towards my monkey. So one, I'm going to top view, and I'm going to go in wireframe view, which is Z, right? Don't think I'm a shortcut. So I'm gonna make these up. So Z to go into wireframe view. Let's rotate towards the monkey, and also in front view. Let's just make sure it's pointing towards the monkey, and I'll just see the other views as well, just to make sure. It's pointing towards my monkey. So I'm pretty confident that's how it's supposed to look. And let's, um, I think that works. Let's, you know, you can always change the view just to get the right angles. And if we go to what we see now, F12, you're seeing more of it, but I still can't see that light that I want to see. So I'm going to increase, I'm going to put in use nodes and let's see what we can get here, F12. Uh, I don't see a difference. So let's change a few things. One, let's increase the size to like five. Two, let's change the strength to like a thousand. See what we get here. Same exact results. <laughs> I don't like this. Show cone. All right, that works, but that's not going to give me the thing I want. Size, uh, probably 100. Let's see, let's see. All right, so it seems like in this particular renderer, this light thing not working out for me, so I'm going to change it. What I'll do instead, I'm going to create a plane. This is a plane, and all I'm going to do is move that plane right above my monkey or right in front of it, and I'm going to rotate that plane on the x-axis rx i'm going to scale it to make it bigger but i also want to point it towards my monkey and what i'll do is i'm going to create a new material for this and call it light l-i-g-h-t and instead of using diffuse i'm going to choose emission which is going to emit light i'm just going to create my own light so let's see what that looks like now there we go so that's one lamp i mean you can always increase the make it more like this and I'm also going to create one more that's that was shift Z by the way that was just my um, rendered view not actually a rendered image so I'm going to create another one in a different direction so shift D to duplicate I'm going to create one at the back uh, slightly and probably carry it a little bit over here put like a kind of a, a lamp there and just move this over with G to grab. Let's see what it looks like there. Keeping those outside the view, of course. 
and one alloy is created another lamp because these two are duplicated they have the same exact material which means it's a really powerful lamp that's blowing on both of them but let's say i want one to be less bright and probably a different color so one i'll change this to yellow just generally speaking just have a nice warm color on our monkey and also for the second one i'll hit the plus button which creates a duplicate of the same one but it's based it's not the same material but it's based off the original material so then i can come in here lower the strength and probably set it to light dot cool and just change the color to something a little cooler right now when i render it out and if i increase the size or the strength of this I get some cool looking black. I'll just change this back to uh, this. I'll just turn it into glass instead. And I'll make it a uh, white one. Glass will give you something completely transparent. Unless you change the roughness, of course. And the index of refraction. So I'm going to actually render this image now. <clears throat> I think it'll come out good, so I'll try to render it. All right, I'll use notes for this, for the world, and just set the background to something a little lighter. And render F12. <clears throat> and you get something looking something like this. Of course, it's really noisy in the background. That's because I have very low sampling. I currently have, I think, about 32 samples, which is low. But if you have higher samples, it takes longer to render, but it gives you so much better results. And how you do that is go to render, which is this little camera icon. And in sampling, my current render one is 128. I'm going to buff that up to about 500, see what we get. I'm going to trust my GPU right now and see what we get. So it takes a little bit of time, but you're going to get some better looking results, hopefully. Of course, there are a few settings you can change to get less samples, generally speaking, but this, this kind of works. So now it looks like a monkey with um, some stuff. So first, they have class. Blender isn't too difficult. Um, once you learn a few of those things, you feel free to explore. The next thing we're going to be moving on to mod modeling something more complex. Um, besides using the regular objects, we can transform our objects into things we actually want them to be. So as we close, I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful experience watching these little videos. And I will see you again shortly. Good night. So that's what we have. That's it. And last but not least, although we've rendered this, and just notably, you're actually rendering at 50% of your resolution right now. It says 50 over here. If you want it to be bigger, of course, 100%. But if you want to save this image as an actual image and not just keep it inside Blender itself, you go to image down here and choose save as image. And just choose where you want to save it. Let's call it Susan. Boom. And you just save as an image and just look for it at the location you have it and that's it. Okay? That's it. So have a good day. I'm going to close recording now and yeah. Bye.